All right, everybody, we're going to start standing. And you might want a, a little bit of space around you. So we might be um, doing, in a moment, we'll do some stuff on all fours where we might take the foot out wide to the side. So just be aware, if you've only got enough space for that to happen on one edge of your mat, then you might need to um, just to, to, to turn around so that you can take your leg out on the other side when we do the other end, okay? So um, yeah, come on to the, on to, into, into enough space that you can stand with your feet turned out ever so slightly, a little bit of a bend into the knees, and then you're going to start spinning, okay? And this spinning motion doesn't happen because you're turning your arms. It happens from the feet up, okay? So think about your feet, Think about the way that they touch the floor and think about how you can use the sides of your feet to help you to propel this movement. And as you keep using the sides of your feet, the pelvis begins to turn, the spine begins to rotate, the shoulders spin with the body, with the, with the rib cage and the arms are a natural extension of that and there's a there's a sort of sense that as you build up a bit of momentum the arms lift slightly and they help to propel the movement but essentially the movement is happening from the feet we keep the knees soft because that allows a little bit of its uh, shock absorbing uh, uh, ability and when the knees are a little bit bent, what happens is that the ligaments are, that run either side of the knee are able to cope with this twist motion, okay? If your legs were dead straight, if you had locked knees, then that's potentially when you might injure your knee joint. So we need that little bit of softness so that it feels a bit like we're bobbing up and down. And as you can see, I'm not going too quickly I'm not trying to, you know, create myself, uh, to, not trying to, to, to cause myself to become out of breath. This should feel quite a pleasant, quite a lovely thing to do. But I do want you to drop into it so that it feels quite natural. And if you want to close your eyes, you can, but also encourage your head to turn so that you're looking out over your shoulders. Then your arms, now the front arm might just lightly tap the opposite waist or the front hand and it go, as it goes across your body and the back arm might just lift gently up so that it's tapping the back of the kidney area. All right. But if that doesn't happen naturally, don't, don't force that to happen. I know for me, I've got a little bit of a rotator cuff injury on my left shoulder and it's aggravated when my arm is behind my body. So for me to tap my, my right kidney with my left hand um, isn't, isn't that much fun, okay? So I don't, I don't do things, I don't put my arms there just because um, that's what I've you know, been told to do, for instance. Go with what feels natural, what feels good. And if you've not been up long, if you have only just made it to, to standing, then this is going to be a great way to, to get the body, you know, woken up, ready for our practice. We don't want to do too many strong stretches too early on. Okay, so we're going to slow this down. Let's come to a, a natural stop. And then when you get there, close your eyes and just stand for a moment. I want you to keep the knees a little bit bent as though you're letting your, your body weight drop into the pelvis slightly. And breathe. And just notice for a minute the changes in the sensation or the lift of the energy that we're feeling within our bodies. Okay, so now we're going to keep the same stance, but you're going to swing the arms up 
and then one arm's going to go across the body, the other arm's coming behind, and then it's back to the centre, and then over to the other side, back to, up to the centre, and then across. Okay, so these are working into the shoulders, but also they're encouraging more breath into the lung space. Notice there's a little bob still at the knees. Good. Keep breathing. Try not to overthink it too much. I need to just move away from the wall because I'm banging into the wall. And I have to quite, I have to think about this one. This movement doesn't come naturally for me. So if you get a little bit muddled and it, and it feels a bit weird, don't worry. I think I said this to you the other day, if you were here, but my, um, I said this, I was doing this with my daughter and she was, I said, it's a bit like doing a floss. And she just looked at me with that disdain of, no mum, it's nothing like doing the floss. Like, oh, oh well. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to slow that down, just naturally coming to a stop again. And we're going to swing the arms forwards and backwards in front of the body, alternating which elbow comes in front, which arm comes in front. Good. And then when you're ready, you're coming into an eagle arm, doesn't matter which way, but then come up to stand. Lift the elbows up and do some circles in the air, freeing up the space on the back where the shoulder blades are. Then leaving the elbows here, as you breathe in, just remember soft knees a little, breathe in and move the elbows away and round the upper back, breathe into the back of the chest. Then as you breathe out, you can return back to being upright. So two more of these breathing in and the elbows move away. Chin to the chest will give you more stretch. Breathing out, coming back in. One more time, breathing in, elbows moving away. Breathing out. Okay, take a breath in here. And as you breathe out, bend the knees enough so that you can tilt your body forwards and down and allow your head to hang. See how far the fingers get or the arms get. Don't force them down. But I want you to imagine a line from the top of your head all the way down to your tailbone. And just feel the connection between the two areas, please. As you breathe in, board the breath softly inflating that back line of your body. Okay, so on the next inhalation, coming back up to stand, releasing the arms and coming back into those swings. And then the same thing, changing the cross of the elbows, make sure you have gone the other way. Bringing them up into eagle arms, some circles, And then three breaths, breathing in, elbows away, chin to chest, breath to back body, and breathing out, coming back. You can go at your own pace here, breathing in, and out. One more time, breathing, and out. Breathe in again upright, and as you breathe out, bend the knees enough so that you can tilt your pelvis down. Coming into a forward fold, just letting yourself hang here. Take two or three breaths. Visualizing the line from the crown of the head all the way to the tailbone. Encouraging that line to lengthen, but also to stay fairly soft and organically shaped. Don't try to um, force the body into any shape that's not yet ready to go. Okay. So then on your next inhalation, when it comes, breathe your way slowly back up, releasing the arms, just give them a couple of swings. And then take the hands behind you, link the fingers, roll the shoulders back, please. As you breathe in, lift the elbows away, or lift the hands away, bring the elbows closer together, point the tailbone down slightly. And as you breathe out, bring the hands closer in. So again, don't force this movement. Breathing in, the arms lift away. Breathing out and gently coming down. Okay, 
Okay, one more time, breathing in and out. Good, okay, now you're gonna change the hand position. You're gonna link your fingers still. You're gonna point through your thumb and your index finger, but that's behind your body. The heel of the hands don't need to be together. So if you're like me, I, I find this quite a challenge. My shoulders don't really like being behind the body very much. So if you're the same as me, don't, don't force the arms to become straight. Don't over rotate the shoulders back if it feels really uncomfortable for any reason. But we're going to do the same thing. We're going to breathe in to front body, bend the knees a little bit, and as we breathe out, come forwards and keep lengthening through the, thing, the fingers, the fingertips. Let the chin fall towards the chest. Allow the back of the legs to gently lengthen. Stay here for another breath. Good. And then as you inhale, slowly roll your back up to stand. And just give the uh, hands a little bit of a shake out when you can and then we'll link the fingers together, we'll pump the forearms up and down so that we are rolling the wrist joint and this is in preparation for having our hands on the floor in a moment so we're just lubricating and warming this important structure so we, we tend to drop our body weight into here and the wrist can, can take a little bit of a battering. So let's swing that out a couple of times and then change the cross of the fingers and pump the forearms up and down again, letting the wrist roll. Good, looking lovely everyone, well done. And then swing it out again. All right, very nice. Okay, so we're gonna to come to the back of the mat please. And you're going to start to fold down towards the floor. So I like to slide the hands down the front of the legs. My feet are about hips width apart. Letting the hands come down to the floor, down to the mat, crawling them forwards and then laying my knees down onto the floor when you feel ready. Now sit your bottom back towards your heels with your toes tucked under if you can. So you've got a little bit of a stretch happening for the, for the underneath of the feet. And again, this is very good for the spine. It's very good for the train of connective tissue that runs up the back line of the body. When you feel ready, and if you can, let your head, um, your arms lengthen forwards and your head lower down to the mat. If it doesn't quite get there and you, and you want to, you can put something underneath your forehead, but you don't have to. Just allowing the head to bow forwards and feeling the little bit of stretch for the shoulders here, okay? So as the heart sinks towards the ground, can you soften into the shoulders a little bit and breathe here? Toes being stretched, that line of the body lengthening, but softly, okay? And then we will float up on an inhalation to all fours. Tucking, uh, sorry, untucking your toes, but bringing your hands underneath your shoulders. And we're just gonna work on the wrists a little bit more. So we want to do some circles here. So think about the, the palm of your hand and your body weight moving to the top of the palm. Okay, so where the fingers meet the palm. And as you roll yourself, your wrists in circles, just feel that, that you're taking some of the tension out of the wrist and into the top of the palm. Now go the other way, do some circles the other way. Okay. And then come back to the center. And I'd like you just to, to keep the hands naturally placed on the floor but to lean forwards as far as you can without straining or hurting the wrists, but keeping the shoulders, and sorry, the arms straight. Then as you come backwards, shoulders over the wrist, can you lift your fingers off of the floor? They might only lift just a tiny bit, just your fingertips, so the palm stays on the floor, but the fingers lift off. Then you're rocking forwards again, arms staying straight as you can, lengthen the arms and come back and just see if you can lift your fingers, keep your palms on the ground. Good, and one more time, coming forwards and then backwards and lifting the fingers. Very nice, okay. Now, and give the, sit back a minute, give the wrists a little bit of a roll. Okay, 
Now this is, this is a nice one. So you're going to make a fist and you can tuck your thumbs inside your fingers. So wrap your fingers around your thumb. Then you're going to bring your fists together so that your knuckles are resting into each other. They've got that nice little weave, haven't they? Then you're going to bring the back of your hands onto the floor. Now this can be a bit icky, okay? So keep the, feet, the knuckles as close together as you can and then lift up the back of the shoulders round the back body and see how straight you can get your arms. Yes, this is a bit of an ouchy one sometimes, but great for stretching the wrists. Good job. And then have a rock from side to side. Very nice. And then gently release. Ah, <laughs> give them a little bit of a shake. Okay, just one more, one more little wristy thing, which will be quite nice after what we've just done. So you're going to come back onto all fours, but turn your palms, turn your fingers so they point back to where your knees are, okay? Um, you can have your knees quite close to your fingertips if you wish to. You're going to lean backwards and let the heel of your hand, so your wrist, lift off of the floor and then come back, okay? So just see where you can go with this. Again, don't force this to happen, but just a couple of these. As you lean back, the, the, the heel of the hand comes away from the ground, a nice big stretch down the inside of the arms. All right, and then come back to centre. Back onto your hands. So your hands, what this does is it creates a little bit of space in the wrist and it creates lightness. Now the next thing I want you to do, because this is really important for some of the other stuff that we're going to be doing this morning. So I want you to think about, we've talked about this a lot recently, thinking about your upper arm bones and your triceps, which are on the back of your arm, back of your upper arm. And I want you to spin them backwards. So the, the crease of your inner elbow faces the top of the mat or faces the opposite corner of the mat is fine. So think about, as you do this, it's, we call this wrapping the arms back or rolling the arms back. Now, when that happens, I want you to notice how it stabilizes the shoulder right down here. Uh, at the, underneath of the shoulder blade and the serratus muscles. So I want you to feel that that's happening and then I want you to lift the back of your heart to the ceiling. So can you see that I've rounded the, the back of my upper body? I'm not collapsing down to the floor like this. I want you to lift a little bit up and wrap the arms. Now from here, can you point your tailbone to the end of your mat? So you're kind of making a dome shape. You're, co you're hollowing out your belly. So I want you to point your tailbone back towards your heels. Keep rolling the shoulders back, lifting the back heart like a mini cat, and then tuck your toes under and send your heels back. Keep pointing your tailbone backwards towards the end of the mat, towards your heels. Turning the upper arms backwards, lifting the back of the heart, and thinking about the front of your hip bones moving towards your rib cage and your rib cage moving towards your hips. So loads to think about, hold it one more breath, keep breathing, well done. And then pop your knees down onto the floor, untuck your toes, take your bottom back towards your heels, turn maybe your palms up towards the ceiling, let your head hang and softly come down into an easy rest for a moment. Just give the wrists whatever movement that they need to feel comfortable. And great. Okay. So let's slide the fingertips forwards again towards the top of the mat. On an inhalation, float yourself up to all fours and find that arm position automatically, rolling the upper arms back, elbow creases point forwards, lifting slightly through the back of the body, so you're separating your shoulder blades. Tuck your toes under and hover your knees 
an inch off of the floor. Keep pointing your tailbone backwards towards your heels, lifting your navel in towards your tummy, letting your shoulders work a little bit harder here. Good job. And then slowly, slowly, slowly come backwards. So the bottom moves backwards in space and up. Let the head hang between the arms and pedal the heels as you slowly open up the back of the legs. All right. And then we're going to look towards where the hands are and walk the feet gently up towards your hands. Feet about hips width apart. Bend the knees enough so that you can hang the head down. Maybe hold the opposite elbow for a moment. Have a little sway side to side. Put some space into the sides of the waist. Okay, and then release the arms and slowly roll yourself all the way up to stand. Good, and as you get there, take the arms out wide to the sides, breathing in. Bringing the hands together above your head and look at your thumbs. And then gently bring the hands down to your heart. Rest them there, relax your shoulders, close your eyes and breathe. And here is a good time to set your intention for your practice. Maybe you have a goal for today. Maybe you have an intention that can, can, can lead you to your goal. You have some, some task you'd like to complete, a, a job that needs doing, or maybe it's just a state of being, a, a, a state of mind that you would like to, to adhere to uh, from this practice as a result of today's practice. And it nourishes and feeds you for the day. So with your intention, your focus in mind, Let's begin, let's breathe in. Take the arms all of the way up to the ceiling and look at your thumbs. Press into your heels, squeeze your glutes and lift the hop. Breathe out and gently come all of the way down to the ground. Letting the head hang, letting the, the arms be long. When you're ready, step back into a plank so you can do lots of little steps or just a couple of big long ones. Think about that plank position. So wrap the upper arms, point the tailbone towards the heels. Find the strength in the abdomen here. So you're really working your core. Then pop your knees down to the ground. Keep the wrap of the arms. So the elbows are pointing forwards. And start to bend the elbows backwards so that you can bring your chin and your chest to the floor in front of the hands. Then slowly lift up, untuck the toes. Cobra pose, just a nice, easy, gentle back bend. Come down a little bit, lift up to your hands and knees, tuck under your toes and find yourself into a downward dog. You can pedal here or you can stay stationary. You're gonna take three breaths. Just breathe in. Think about the arm wrap again. So it still happens even when you're in this position. So externally rotating the upper arms, it's as though you're trying to wrap your shoulder blades around across the rib cage. All right, last breath. Then let's look forwards. Slowly walk or step the feet up towards your hands, hanging in a forward fold. Breathe in, halfway lift. So hands to shins or fingertips can stay on the floor, lifting the back half. Folding down, breathing out. Inhale, arms come wide, come up to stand. Strong legs, firm the glutes. Reach up, look up. Exhale, hands to heart. Okay, that's round one. We're gonna do two more of these. So breathing in, just going really slowly, looking up. Out, breathe out and come down into a forward fold, all the way down. Chin falling towards the chest. Stepping back into a plank position. Wrapping the upper arms, tailbone back. Nice. Knees down. Chin and chest down in front of the hands. Then leaning, lifting forwards. Shoulders back, heart moves forwards in space. Good. A little bit of lowering and then come up onto the knees, tuck under the toes and find a downward dog. Okay, 
This time, right foot lifted up to the sky. Step it through to where your hands are. If it doesn't quite get there, help it out. Give your, uh, use your hand to help you. Drop your left knee down to the ground. Leave the right knee above the ankle. Breathe in. Squeeze the glutes. Lift up the chest, but drop the hips. Good. Breathe out. Fold forward. Lift up the back knee, step it to the top of the mat. Take another exhale when it comes. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms wide, come up to stand. Look, thumbs. Bring that intention back down into your heart. Good. Inhale, straight back up. Swan dive this time, arms wide, all the way down to the ground. Half, no, actually not a half minute, step back, plank pose. Wrap the upper arms, tailbone back, lift the navel. Feel that strength that you're starting to grow. Knees down, chin and chest down. Cobra pose, untuck the toes, firm the glutes, strong thighs, strong legs will get you higher up. Keep going, De lowering down, hands and knees, tuck toes, downward dog. Left foot lifted up to the sky. Step it through to the top of your mat, give it a helping hand if it needs it. Right knee comes down, breathing in, arms sweep up, either straight up or take a little bit more of a back bend if you wish. Bowing down. Fingertips to the floor, lift the back knee, step forwards, exhale, fold down. Halfway lift now, breathe in. Breathe out to fold. Well done, breathe in. Arms come wide all the way up, well done. Exhale, hands to heart. And just take a couple of breaths here. Relax the shoulders. Soften the jaw. Feel your heart beating behind your hands. And let the slow and steadiness of your breath calm the beating of your heart. Okay. Then we're going to come back down to hands and knees. I want you to do this as, as the start of a sun salute. So let's lower the arms, breathe in, take them out wide, bring them above your head. And as you breathe out, come down to the ground. Good, let's leave the hands either side of the feet. And if you're feeling, if you're feeling adventurous today, jump your feet back. And if you're not, just step your feet back into a plank position. So however you get there is your choice. All right. Then pop your knees down onto the floor. Good, okay, so we're going to go, we're going to build a little bit of strength and do a little bit of core work here. So um, from this all fours position, if you're struggling with your wrists, be on your knuckles or your fingertips or roll up the end of your mat accordingly. You can also use a block underneath the knee, so we're going to do um, opposite arm, opposite leg balances here. This is where you're going to need some space, okay? So we're going to do the right leg out to the side first, so make sure you've got some right leg space coming up. Um, just turn yourself or move yourself over a little bit if you need to. So let's start with wrapping the upper arms around the top of the, uh, the um, to face, so the elbow creases face forwards. A little bit of a dome to the back of the heart. Point the tailbone towards the end of the mat so the tummy is engaged. And your job is to maintain this shape as much as you can. So you're really working hard. Take your right leg back, make sure that you've retained that engagement. Left arm forwards float the right leg up and see if you can keep holding this. So don't lose the upper arm on the right arm especially. So wrapping the right arm back, lifting the back heart, tailbone towards the heel, reaching left arm forwards. This is strong. This is hopefully going to get you working, feeling hot. Breathing in and breathing out. Good. 
Let's pop the left hand down, pop the right knee down. Let's do it on the other side. So we've created this, this muscle memory. So right leg back. Wrap the upper arms, lift the back heart, tailbone towards the heel and float the left leg off of the floor. When you feel ready, take the right arm forwards and hold this here. Keep drawing the navel in towards the spine. See if you can maintain that. You might not lift your legs so high, it's okay. It's going to make you use your glutes a whole lot more. Good. And then hand comes down, leg comes down, knee comes back in. Very nice. Okay, so over onto the other side again. This time you're going to take the right leg back, find your start position. So gain the, the arms, shoulders, heart, tailbone. Think about that all happening. Float the right leg off the floor, toes point down towards the ground, and left arm forwards. Okay, so we're going to move here. We're going to breathe in and the leg comes out to the side, the arm comes out to the side. So if I turn this way, you'll be able to see. So you've got one arm going out, one arm, and then you're coming back forwards. Coming in and back. So we've got to maintain that tummy. Think about keep lifting the navel up. This is hard work. Don't worry if you're a bit wobbly, it's all normal. Two more, please. Good. And back. Well done. Take a little bit of a break. Pop that knee down. Pop that hand down. We will come on to the other side and then we'll rest in child's pose and we've done five on the other side. So left leg back. Uh, find your start position. Point the tailbone. Really draw the navel. Arm and leg lifts. And you're going to breathe in. Take the leg out wide. I need to move into some space. And breathe out come back to center breathe in keep finding that lovely stability don't lose the arm or the shoulder think about what the shoulder is doing this is really important we contain that that lovely stability to build strength good two more well done good job and coming back this time resting down and let's float the knees down uh, sorry the heels towards the bottom and let your head come down low good all right so think about the breath inflating the back of your body and then as you exhale, the breath moves down to the sitting bones. And you breathe out through the tailbone. Okay. So let's think about sliding fingertips forwards if they're not already there. Floating up to an all fours position, tucking your toes under and wrapping the upper arms, doming the back body a little bit, tailbone towards the heels slightly and hover the knees off of the floor here. Okay, take a breath in. As you breathe out, bring the right knee as close up towards your chest as you can and then put the foot back down okay so this is going to be really working your core bring the left knee in keep pressing the floor away and then left foot back right knee in and back left knee in keep keep the tailbone long keep drawing the navel up good keep going either side Let's do one more right leg, one more left leg. Good job. Knees down, chin and the chest down in between the hands. Legs go back, heart lifts up. Cobra pose. Elbows in, uh, collarbones wide, heart forwards, shoulders back. And gently come down. Take a little bit of a rest, wiggle the hips from side to side. Okay, and then pop your 
elbows underneath your shoulders so you're into sphinx pose. Okay, so, so make sure sh elbows are underneath shoulders, heart can lift up, not, too, not a strain in the back of the neck line, so keep the back of the neck nice and long. Okay, so we're going to lift up into praying mantis, uh, which we did the other day, I think we did this on Tuesday, so it'll be familiar to some of you. Um, and it's quite a nice one, it's, it covers all of the same things that we've been doing, but without the wrists really being involved. So when you're ready, you're going to breathe in here, and as you breathe out, you're going to lift up onto the knees, but you're going to find all those same shapes that you found before. So rolling the upper arms back, the um, shoulder blades spreading apart, the back of the heart lifting, the navel drawing in towards the spine, the tailbone pointing back towards the heels. And then you're floating forwards, hips come down, heart lifts up, back into cobra pose. Okay, so this is fab for the upper body strength as well as the core. This time tuck the toes under. <clears throat> Same thing, breathe in for sphinx, breathe out, just come up onto the knees, but round the back body as much as you can. Good, those that want to go stronger, float the knees off of the floor here, keep rounding back body, tailbone points towards the heels. And then bring the knees down, float the hips down, sphinx pose. Good. <laughs> we can do it one more time. Okay. So when you're ready, breathe in. Tuck toes, breathe out. Pray in mantis or tuck toes, send heels back, come into a stronger variation of the pose. Good. And then knees down. Don't let the hips come down into sphinx. Stay here. Bring the knees a little bit closer in towards the elbows. Okay. Then what I want you to do is lift your elbows off of the floor and pop them back down. Lift them up off of the floor and bring them down. One more time. Lift them up and down. So that's fairly easy, yeah? Tuck the toes under. We're coming into dolphin pose. So when you're ready, breathing out to lift the hips up. Okay, now from here, can you lift one elbow off of the floor and pop it down? Other side, lift the elbow off the floor and pop it down. Okay, bring the feet a little bit closer if you can, do the same thing. One elbow lifts, bring it down. Other elbow lifts. Bring it down. Now you know what's coming. Both elbows, bring both elbows off the floor. Well done. Spin the upper arm bones back. Keep wrapping the shoulder blades across the back body. Lower both elbows down. Good. Now come back up again, up onto the straight arms. Two more of these elbows down. Good. One more time coming up. You've got this. Oh, try and do it at the same time if you can, and come down. Good. Knees onto the floor, untuck the toes, and rest in child's pose. Do whatever you need to to relax your shoulders, your wrists, straighten out your elbows. Good job. Okay, a couple more breaths here, and we'll move, move into doing something else. <laughs> Get you off your shoulders and your and your um, elbows. Ah, lovely. So let's take an inhalation. Find yourself back up into an all fours position when you're ready. Tucking under your toes, finding a downward dog. And thinking about all those shoulder positions, so the upper arm bone wrap, the shoulders around, the shoulder blades across the back of the ribs. 
think about how maybe that's created more space, how maybe you feel stronger. Then when you're ready, we're going to either step or you can jump your feet to the top of the mat. So bending the knees if you're jumping, looking where you're going and seeing if you can bring the heels to the bottom, or did do that very well, to come up to, to the, towards the top of your mat. Okay, hanging yourself down and then breathing in, coming all of the way up. Hands come wide, palms together. Exhale down to your heart. Close your eyes, relax your shoulders, and breathe. Contemplate your, your intention. Is it still your main focus? Has it changed even? It's okay to change it. Okay. So then, let's arms wide, breathe in, come all the way back up to the sky. Look, thumbs. Take a little bit of a back bend here. Squeeze the thighs, legs firm. Gently exhale, folding all of the way down, coming down to the ground. Head hangs. Leave your right foot where it is and stride your left foot down to the back of the mat. Pop your left knee down onto the floor. Okay? So we're going to come into Anjani Asana. So breathe in and the arms can come straight up to the ceiling as we mentioned before. If you want to go into a back bend, you must make sure that the glutes, legs, pelvis, core is all working strong, okay? So don't let yourself just flop into it. Really get the stability happening from the, the lower part of your body, okay? Now we're going to come into a twist. So bring the arms down, bring the left hand onto your right knee and the right hand just somewhere onto the side of your body. Make sure the left toes are tucked under. And if you want to, you can send the left heel back. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Then your right arm is going to come behind you towards the back of the mat. It might be that you can take your left hand forwards. Breathe in here. And as you breathe out, knee comes down, hands come back, hands can come to the floor, okay? So that's, we're gonna build this into a, into a little bit of a sequence now. You're gonna breathe in, the arms are going to come up, turn Jamie Asana, back bend if you wish to. Breathing out and take the twist. So we'll take the twist without the knee so that you can feel what it feels like with the knee down. If you want to, you can send the heel back to straighten out the left leg. Then it's back to the center, hands to the knee or hands to the floor. Okay, so we've got that general idea. So we're gonna build that in. We're gonna add in one more pose now. So take a breath in, I'm Janie Asana again. As you breathe out, take your twist. Very nice. Left hand comes down to the floor, right hand goes up to the sky. So now this is our next pose. We've got a glute stretch happening. Right hand up, looking out to the right hand side. The knee can be on the floor for this. Good, then the hand comes down. Step the right foot back, come into a downward dog. Find your nice shouldery position, stretch it on out of your body. And then we'll take the left foot to the top of the mat. So sweep the left foot up. Take it back, take it underneath you and step it forwards and pop the right knee down. Breathe in. Let's take the arms up. Find your lovely Anjani Asana with firm glutes. Right hand to left knee, left hand to the hip, turn. Then think about taking the left arm back in space. Very nice. Come back to the center. Lower the hands down to the floor just to reset so the pelvis feels nice and stable. Up again, and Jamie Asana breathing in, lifting up. As you breathe out, twisting to the left, maybe the arms stay high. Good. Lowering the right hand down to the floor, left hand comes up to the sky. All right, bow the left hand down. Reset the pelvis, just feel stable in the center. One more time, breathing in, arms coming up, lifting all the way up. 
This time tucking the right toes under if you want, sending the right heel back, twisting. Right hand comes down, left hand lifts up, stay in the twist. The more you turn the rib cage, the more stretch for the glutes. And then bring the left hand down. Step back, find a plank position. Think about all the things we've done so far today. Pop your knees down to the ground. Bend the elbows, bring the chin and the chest forwards and down. Sweep the heart forwards and up. Untuck the toes for cobra. Folding down a little bit, lifting up to hands and knees. Finding a downward dog. Very nice. Right foot lifted up to the sky. Step it through to the top of your mat. Try it with the knee off of the ground this time. Breathe in. Arms lift. Nice. Breathe out, twisting gently to the right. Left hand comes down, right arm lifts up. This time cartwheel right arm alongside the right ear and look at your right thumb for a deeper stretch. Very nice. We're going to go in reverse. Floating the back of the right arm up and back. Left arm lifts up off the floor. Good. Turning back to centre. Arms lift up. Bowing back down. Right foot steps back. Downward dog. Very nice. Left side. Breathe in. Left foot lifts up. Step left foot forwards towards the hands. Breathe in. Come up. All the way up. Breathe out into your twist. Good. Right hand lowers down. Left arm lifts up. Cartwheel the arm if you want to. Look towards your thumb. Very nice. Go back in reverse. Arm goes back in a semicircle as you lift back up into your twist. Then back to a high balancing warrior lunge. And bowing forwards and down. Well done. Step back. Good job. Just press it out for a moment in your downward dog. Think about your lovely arms. Think about the length of the legs. And float the knees down onto the ground. Untuck your toes and rest down into child's pose. And breathe. Breathe into the tailbone. Breathe out through the hips, through the pelvis, and let the shoulders curl around your knees. Okay. So then let's slide the fingertips forwards again. Float up to an all fours position, tuck toes, downward dog when you're ready, nice strong arms. And then right foot, take it up to the sky. Step it through towards your right hand. Maybe baby step the left foot in a little bit closer so that you can spin the left heel down to the ground so the toes are pointed out slightly to the side. You're going to come up, so sweep the arms forwards and up with a strong front leg as you lift up. Straightening the front leg, very nice. Take a little bit of a back bend here. Then releasing the arms, and if you can, bring them behind the back of your body. You can link the fingers, you can do the same thing that we did at the very start, or you could just hold the opposite upper arm. Another option is to take a reverse uh, prayer hands behind your back if you like. We're into pyramid pose, so I want you to face the hips towards the top of the mat, and if you feel wobbly, walk your right foot to the longer edge of your mat so your feet are wider, okay? Bend the front knee a little bit, Breathe in. As you breathe out, fold forwards towards your thigh. Chin falls towards the chest when you can. 
And if it's too much for the hands to be behind your body, have them on the floor in front of you, it's fine. If you can, straighten the front leg or work towards it straightening, don't force it straight. Taking the right sit bone back slightly, let the left hip come forwards. Just take another breath in and another breath out here. Good job. Then with a soft right knee, breathe in, lift and lengthen your front body as you come up to stand. Release the hands, sweep the arms really high above your head. Okay, same thing as before almost. Right hand's gonna come onto the right hip, Right knee is going to bend, left heel is going to spin up off of the floor so the toes can point forwards. You might want to wiggle your foot back a little bit, you might not. You're going to bring the left hand down, just somewhere, it could be fingertips onto the floor, it could be onto a block if you want to. Keep the right knee bending, take the right hand up to the sky. Breathe in here, as you breathe out, cartwheel the right arm alongside your ear and look towards your right thumb again. Very nice. Now we're going to work towards straightening the front leg. So you're going to cartwheel the right arm back up towards the ceiling and straighten the right leg here. Then the arm's going to keep traveling in a circle going backwards towards the end of the mat down past your hip, past your outer thighs, it goes past your outer thigh, bend your right knee and your back into your uh, revolved Pajvakonasana. Then as it comes up, the leg straightens and sweeps back all the way to the end of the mat. As it comes forwards, the knee bends, you pause here, look thumb, good. And then straighten the leg if you can, hand comes up, Arm goes back, one more time, bending the knee as you reach, good, and then back up, leg straightens, a bit like a, a revolved triangle pose, but with the back heel off of the floor. Very nice, everyone. Bring the right hand straight down, plant the hand, step the foot back. You might want to pedal the heels a little bit here as you even out the hips and the legs. Okay, let's do the left side. Left foot lifts up to the sky. Step it up and towards your left hand. And maybe bring the right foot in a little bit closer because remember we need the shorter stance initially for pyramid pose. Turn the right toes out and maybe widen the feet to the long edges of your mat. And then slowly grow yourself up to the ceiling, bringing the arms up. Front leg can be straight as you reach up, body weight in the back leg. Exhale to lower the hands and bring them behind your back body. So whatever feels comfortable for you, you're opening the chest here, letting the, the collarbones widen. So be comfortable in your arm position. Bend your left knee, make sure the hips are square to the top of your mat, and that's your priority here, as well as the back heel being on the floor. So if it comes off of the floor, then please step your foot a little bit closer. Okay, breathing in. And as you breathe out, folding forwards towards your bent knee. Remember, you can have your hands in front of you if you wish. When you come to your maximum, let the chin fall towards the chest if you can, just to get that extra bit of length along the, the back of the neck and the upper back. And then work towards straightening your left leg, if that's available, by opening up the back of the knee joint. Think about the left hip moving backwards in space slightly, the right hip moving forward slightly. Very nice. Taking another two breaths here. Breathe in and out. Breathing in and out. Soften the front knee as you breathe in, come back up. Good. Bringing the, releasing the arms, bringing them up above the head, reaching upwards. Lovely. Bring the hands down through the center line. Now, watch what we did from before. Okay, so left hand onto the left hip, 
the right arm's going to come up, the right heel is going to lift, and I want you to take the foot back just a tiny bit. You might want to make that longer or shorter according to your own needs. As you breathe in, reach the arm up nice and long, and then as you breathe out, bring the hand down to the mat. We're going to spin to the side, and you're going to lift your left arm up to the ceiling, looking up towards your thumb if you can. Then there's that cartwheel, so the arm reaches alongside the ear, and you look towards your thumb if that's available to you. And here is where you decide, is the back leg in the right place, okay? Because if it feels a bit congested in your tummy, you might want to take the foot back a little bit further to give you a bit more length in your, in your spine, a little bit more space. Okay, so now you're going to take the arm straight up to the ceiling and straighten the, the, the front leg if that's available to you. Then the arm continues its big circle. It goes back past the outer hip and thigh, the knee bends, and you reach it back into that lovely long position. Then it's going to come back again, straightening the front leg as it goes and sweeping it back up bending the front knee. Do this one more time. That's lovely. Then as you come back, stay there, pause for a minute into a revolved triangle position, modified triangle position, because remember the back heel is lifted, spin from the rib cage, and then gently lower the, right, the left hand down. Stepping back into a downward dog, so you can pedal out the heels. Very nice. Floating your knees down onto the ground, untucking your toes and resting in the child's pose of your choice. As you start to let your body soften and unwind again. Take another couple of breaths here. And then you can inhale your way up. Good job. Let's come to sit, please. Legs out in front of you. If you need to sit on something, Grab a block or a brick or a blanket or something like that to sit on that makes this more comfortable. We're going to come into Paschimottanasana and then Paschimottanasana with a twist. So, um, so we're going to be here for, for a few minutes. Untuck the flesh of your bottom so that you've found your sit bones to sit on. And if you need to bend your knees for this forward fold, we're just going to soften into the fold first of all for a few breaths. So if you need to bend the knees, that's fine. If you are able to have your legs straight, encourage pressing the back of the knees into the floor and really sending the heels away for that extra stretch down the back of the legs. Breathe in and take the arms up towards the ceiling and reach up strongly through the hands. As you breathe out, lower the arms to shoulder height and reach forwards. Go as far forwards as you can. Your feet, your fingers traveling beyond your toes if you can. Then the hands lower down to wherever you feel able to hold, maybe your ankles, maybe your calves or your shins. Wherever it is, relax, okay? You want a big stretch down the back of the body, but it shouldn't be one that's so intense that you're unable to breathe. Maybe think about lifting up a little bit, breathing in. And as you breathe out, encourage your, your tummy to move along the legs as much as you're able to. Your chin can fall towards your chest. The eyes can close. And keep encouraging that lovely long stretch. Make sure that you're able to breathe. And there's nowhere holding on so tight within your body that it's restricting any of your movements. So think about, are your shoulders relaxing enough? 
as we see, we can use our arms and our shoulders to help us get a little bit deeper into the pose, but are we pushing ourselves? Are we forcing the body to do something it doesn't really want to do just yet? Okay, so taking one more breath here. And inhaling your way back to an upright position. Good, and just start sitting upright again, noticing whether that's um, improved your posture, whether it's made you sit up a little bit straighter or taller even. And we're gonna work with some of the, the, the seated twists. We, I think we did this on Thursday, so some of you will be familiar with this. So you're gonna breathe the arms in, oh, sorry, up, and reach up towards the ceiling. And as you breathe out, you're going to reach forwards in between. Your arms are going to go like, a, like an arrow in between your feet. Then leave one hand where it is and cartwheel the other arm back into a seated twist. And then that arm comes forwards and you reach again. Leave the other arm, taking the opposite arm backwards and then breathing out. Come up to sit hands to heart. Okay, so that's one round. We're going to do a few of these. So breathe in. As you breathe out, point forwards and reach. Breathe in, look back with one arm. Breathe out, reach forward. Breathe in, other arm. Breathe out, reach forwards. Breathe in, come back up to sit. Breathe out, reach forwards. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out, come to sit. Okay, so you can go as fast or as slowly as you wish to. I know I probably went a bit too quickly there. So um, slow it down or speed it up. I want you to do another three rounds of these, please. So you can go at your own pace. And let's go. Breathe it out. I'm not going to talk you through it so much. I'll just do it with you. And just sit. Okay, two more. Okay. One more. Nice. Good job. Absolutely lovely, everybody, <laughs> really nice. So again, just sitting for a moment, seeing whether that feels a little bit more juicy anywhere. And we're then going to bring the right knee in towards us and take it over the top of the left thigh. You're gonna hug the, left, the knee with the left hand, take the right hand behind you, turn to look over the shoulder, if you want, you can take the elbow around to the outside of the knee and make this a stronger twist. Keep the left leg nice and straight, heel away, toes high, and breathing. Okay. Take another breath or two here. Good. Then as you inhale, release, revolve back to the centre, turn the other way briefly, maybe lean a little bit towards the ground. Then coming back upright, releasing the right leg, bending in the left knee, taking it over the top, sitting up as evenly as you can on your sit bones, encouraging the left big toe joint to stay pressed into the floor. Hugging the knee with the right arm, left arm comes behind you. If you want, taking the elbow to the outside of the knee. Right leg staying straight, left leg firmly into the ground if you can. And keep breathing. All right, take another breath in. And the exhalation when it comes, returning back to the center, 
hands swapping over to the other side, a little bit of a lean. And then coming back. Good, releasing the legs, giving the legs a little bit of a shake. Very nice. Okay, so we're almost done. Have to hand any extra layers that you might need. Um, especially if you've noticing your body temperature is beginning to drop a little bit and you want to put um, an extra layer on. Come down to lie when you're ready, please. Okay, so I'd like you to bend your knees. And we're just going to release the spine a little bit, especially after those forward folds and the twists and, and the things that we've done while we we're seated. So I'd like you to bend your knees and bring your heels in towards your body. And make sure your feet and your ankles are about hips width apart. And I'd like you to think about as you breathe in, curling your back body away from the floor and lifting the hips up towards the ceiling. Squeezing the glutes, pressing into the heels, and letting the shoulders support you, maybe rolling on uh, the shoulders a little bit closer together as you allow the chest to open. Then very slowly, you can go entirely at your own pace here. But I, as you lower your hips back down, I really want you to move the, the bottom towards the heels. So you're really creating as much space along your back body as possible. And you can do this a couple of times, just floating up in a, in a really gentle way. Nothing, nothing too strong, nothing too precise here. But do think about the back body working so that you are not straining. So the, the heels working, the glutes and the hamstrings working. And then gently lowering. But as you lower, put that length in, move the bottom towards the heels. Really important. All right, do this one more time, please. Gently peeling the back of your body. And as you come up, maybe turn the head a couple of times side to side. Make sure the shoulders and the arms feel really happy, really spacious. Put all that lovely length into the front body and then slowly release back down. Bottom towards the heels as close as you can get it. And then knees come towards the, the chest and hug the knees in. Take a little bit of a rock from side to side. And then you can slide your feet down and out to the corners of your mat. You can let your toes roll out to the sides. You can turn your palms up towards the ceiling. Make sure you're going to be warm and that if you need to make any little adjustments, you do them as you need. Let the breath come and go. Each time you exhale, the body becoming a little bit more soft. Body weight releasing into the earth. Feeling the back body becoming heavier. Back of the head resting. Jaw releasing.
deeply day in and out, noticing your breath moving with ease, without restriction. And give this time to yourself. This time, this opportunity to do nothing. To rest. To be still. To be present. So, if you wish to continue your shavasana for a little bit longer, feel free to pause your video and carry on relaxing and chilling. If you're ready to, to come back, move on to the next part of your day, then begin to move fingers and toes. And then turn your head from side to side gently. Take a stretch out any way that feels good. And you can bend your knees and slowly roll yourself across to one side. As you begin to take some deeper breaths and maybe allow the eyelids to slowly open. 
<sighs> Good, it's okay. So let's think about supporting yourself with your hands as you ease yourself gently back into a seated position. Doesn't matter how kneeling or cross-legged, it's absolutely fine. Good. Okay, so when you're ready, let's finish together. Think about your intention and what you brought to the practice. What was your focus? That's what you're going to gather up now. So breathe it in, breathe in. Hands act like little scoops and you're going to breathe it all up. Gather it into the palms and then breathe out. Bring the hands down to the heart. Sit with the eyes closed for a minute, the shoulders relax, the jaw soft. Sealing the intention in, bringing your practice to a close. Taking another breath in. Opening your eyes, well done. Now I'll stay to you all. Awesome stuff and well done. Thank you for coming and practicing with me this morning and I hope you have a very lovely rest of the day.